Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you all. And we thank God for your commitment to that though today is a bit rainy and windy and all that, you made it to church. So that's great. And uh, we welcome uh, Annette. <laughs> um, maybe some of us don't know Annette. Uh, Annette, uh, she's been a member for a church for a long, long time. But she moved to the country now. <laughs> good, good to see you, Annette. You must, you must welcome in our church. I'd like to start off with just uh, reading from uh, the book of Deuteronomy. So if you have your Bible with you, if you open to Deuteronomy 32, I'm going to read only four verses. <clears throat> from today on, the uh, elders of the church will be um, preaching about the attributes of God. And today, Bruce is going to uh, talk about God is just. So, uh, and next week I'll be uh, talking about God is holy. And the week after, I think Greg will be speaking about another attribute of God. I can't remember, God is forgiving or God is loving. So that's, that will be happening the next four weeks. All right, let's read from Deuteronomy 32. And I chose that because it has got a verse to do with God being just a God. Uh, Moses is, uh, is, is saying these words. Listen, you heavens, and I will speak. Hear, you earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching fall like rain and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. And verse four, he is the rock. His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. So the, the last verse I read is talking about how God is just and all his works are perfect and also just. And that's what um, uh, Bruce hopefully will be talking to us about it today. The, the four verses, uh, we find that Moses here, he is calling earth and heaven to be witness to what he's saying. In the book of Deuteronomy, what Moses was doing here, he was retelling the story, particularly the law of God, because all the old generation died and now they are just about to move to the uh, promised land, the land of Canaan, and uh, he was trying to remind them again of the law of God. And we find that in, in these verses here, he was saying that um, God is, is a rock. Uh, he is the rock, he says here, and his works are perfect. So in the sense that God is firm in his words, never changes, it is still the same, and it will never change. We know that the word of God being disputed, refuted by so many uh, uh, book writers and philosophers and teachers and all that, but all these lies never really put the word of God uh, at, um, at doubt or, or anything like that. So God, God's word stands firm and will never change. Okay, uh, keep that in mind and then we start our worship with uh, praising God through songs. Let's sing it together. Okay, well, it's, it's a joy, isn't it, now to begin uh, doing live music again. So that's really exciting. Um, so uh, let's stand and let's sing our first song for all you've done, remembering Jesus' death and resurrection on the cross for us. My 
Saviour, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, I will never be the same, cause you came near from the everlasting to the world we live. The Father's only Son, and you lived, and you died, and you rose again on high, and you opened the way for the world to live again. Hallelujah, for all you've done. My Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, I will never be the same, cause you came near from the everlasting to the world we live, the Father's only Son. And you lived, and you died, and you rose again on high, and you opened the way for the world to live again. Hallelujah, for all you've done. And of course, uh, what God has done for us in Christ uh, is also amazing, isn't it? It's, uh, it's grace, the grace of God, or I guess we call it amazing grace. sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. promise good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life enjoys my chains are gone I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. shall 
shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine. Will be forever mine. You are forever mine. Please. Thank you so much, Jared. It's great to listen to live music and, and, and sing together. That's, that's great. Thank you. All right, uh, let's close our eyes and pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for having brought us here together to worship you. Lord, we come together to confess our sins before you. Lord, though we know your commands, yet because of our sinful nature, we still disobey them and break your rules. Lord, we come together to say sorry for the sins that we have committed last week. Lord, we have failed to, to love just like you. We remember the gospel tells us how much you loved the people of all kinds and of all backgrounds and of all status in the society. You loved the unlovely but we failed to do so lord so lord we pray and ask you for forgiveness the bible teaches us that sin is not the wrong thing we do but the right thing we fail to do how many times last week we were supposed to do something but we out of apathy or being so busy we turned a blind eye and we just overlooked it and we didn't care much lord we bring before you today all our failures and our disobedience and our sins and we pray for forgiveness lord Lord, we also come together to adore you and worship you because you are worthy of our adoration. Lord, we thank you for loving us so much. That unconditional love, which it doesn't really, cannot be found amongst men. We always love because of something satisfying to us we like to take not to give but you didn't even spare your own son but you gave it you gave him for us lord we thank you for jesus and we thank you that he is the way and the truth and the life through Jesus, God, you showed us the way to live and how to lead a fulfilling life. And through Jesus, you promised us that even when we die, we still have hope beyond death. Because like you raised Jesus, you're going to do the same for us. And our eternal hope that will be with you forever 
Lord, I pray for every single person in the midst of us today here that we really praise you and worship you from the heart. We come here to say thank you. We come here to worship you, not fulfilling a duty we have to meet to satisfy that unknown God. But Lord, we thank you for the relationship we have with you. And I pray, Lord, that we all worship you in truth and in spirit. We pray all that in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, let me read through the announcements which you have in the bulletin here. Okay, from today, the Zoom live streaming of the Sunday service will be stopped. However, we will record and up upload our service to YouTube. So if you cannot come to church on Sunday morning, you will be able to watch the service online. Please see Damien if you have any questions. Our monthly prayer night will be on tonight, and that's happening 6.30 tonight in the church. Uh, it's in, in the church you hold this time, not in the church. Men's breakfast will meet at uh, Memory Road, McDonald's, next Sunday, the 9th of July. Please meet at the restaurants at 7.30 for a time of fellowship and the prayer. Bible study will be on a break until the start of the, uh, the term, the school term. Early bird registration for the base camp, the Men's Christian Convention, has closed. However, if you would like to attend, the registration are still open. Please see Nick for more details. Is there any other announcements apart from the one being read? No more announcements. Okay, Damien, the kids come to the front, please. And Damien is going to uh, make the kids talk, followed by Ron going to do the congregational prayer for us, and then Greg will be reading the Bible for us. Thank you. Okay, just got up. I just have to be um, in the camera for the recording. Uh, good morning. Do you know any famous people? No? Yes? The last name of one is James. James? James what? What's the last name? That was the last name. James was the last name. What is it famous for? You don't know. Does anyone know a famous person with the surname James? LeBron. LeBron. <laughs> Actually, basketball player. If you're, if you're not into basketball, you probably don't know. LeBron James, it's pretty good. Do you know any famous people? If I show you some pictures, do you think you might know? So if I show you the people in the 60s, can you name these people? Can you, can you see who that is? What about the first person there on the left? Do you want some help? Would you like some help? Maybe the um, adults might be able to help. Yeah. JFK, yeah? Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Stewart, yeah, James Stewart, yeah. So you got JFK, he's a famous um, president of the United States. Then you got Beatles in the middle, who is the uh, really famous uh, band. Uh, then you got James Stewart, a very famous actor in the uh, 60s and 70s, I think. 60s, 50s? 50s, yeah. So they are very famous. What about if, I, if we move up a couple of decades, go into the 80s? <laughs> Do you know any of these people? 
Yeah? I know that I recognize the one on the right. Yeah, you recognize him? Yeah, but I don't know the name. You don't know the name. You can sort of recognize the face, but not the name. Yeah. Well, one on the left, he's playing a very famous role in a movie. It's called Back to So you got Back to the Future um, actor called Michael J. Fox, right? It's very famous in the 80s. And then you got in the middle, do you like princesses? Yeah? She, she's a princess. You don't know? She was called Diana. Her name was Diana, Princess Diana. And on the left, on the right, do you, can you remember his face? Recognize his face at all? Yeah? <laughs> Changed a bit? Oh yeah, he changed a bit from that. <laughs> uh, his name is Michael Jackson. He's a very famous uh, singer. I think it was called King of Pop, something like that. Yeah. Um, and then the yeah. No, the King of Rock was uh, Elvis, wasn't it? Yeah, Elvis Presley. I thought I'd putting Elvis Presley in, but uh, I think uh, '80s is more Michael Jackson. Uh, next slide. We we'll go a couple of decades further. Maybe you might know some of these people. No. All right. So we got uh, Steve Jobs. You know, do you like Apple products? Have you, have you, has your parents got iPhone? Yeah. This guy, uh, he invented the iPhone. All right. So that's uh, uh, Steve Jobs, and you got in the middle Britney Spears. She was one of the most famous singers in the early 2000s, right? And then you got Steve Irwin, uh, an Australian icon. Uh, he was a very famous uh, TV presenter who worked with animals. We were really, really good. Yeah. So, what do we? What can we see? Do you recognize any of them? Can you tell who these people in the past were? Do they matter to you at all? Does it matter to you that some of them died? Not really. But for some of us here, adults, um, recognizing some of them who have passed away bring, brings a tear to your eyes. Why? Because they matter to us quite a bit. For you, kids, people in the 60s, 80s, in the 2000s, really doesn't matter because you were born in two, it passed after 2012, uh, is the earliest, yeah? You, you were born really late, and you, all these people really don't ma mean anything to you. Maybe, but do you have a toy or a special object that you really, really loved in the past when you were younger? Maybe when you were three or four years old. Did you have a, a teddy bear or, or a pillow or a blanket that you really, really cared for? No? no a toy? <laughs> okay. Well, I if you had a, a teddy bear that you really, really loved, right, and then you, you, you forgot about it, Right? After you've grown up, you forgot about your, maybe this is the case, you know, maybe you forgot about your uh, te a blanket that you love or your teddy bear you love. You had a pillow that you really loved, uh, Joanna, and, and then you, you forgot about it, haven't you? I can't remember. <laughs> but if you can't remember, if, you, if you've forgotten those things, what happens? Do you care if it's thrown out? You don't care really, do you? If your parents came along and said, oh, this is not being used anymore, I'll throw it out, do you care? Nah, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because you don't remember it anymore. And uh, this is what happened to the people of Israel. Remember last week, the, in the kids' talk last week, uh, we heard the story about Joseph, yeah? And how Joseph brought all his family into Egypt, and everyone in Egypt welcomed them, right? And, and for many years, the people of Egypt really loved them and cared for them and gave them their own land to live in, yeah? <coughs> And so Joseph, <coughs> uh, while everyone remembered what Joseph did, uh, all the Egyptians really loved and cared for the Israelites. But what happened when people forgot about Joseph? So let me read to you from Exodus chapter 1. <coughs> and uh, verse 8. It says, Then a new king, to whom Joseph meant nothing, came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become far too numerous for us. 
come, we must deal shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous, and if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them and force labor, and they built Pithom and Ramses as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so the e Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. So what, what happened? When, the, when a king who forgot about Joseph came into power, what happened? Yeah? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So sorry, Moses will look at next week. But here what we see is when the king who didn't know Joseph came into power, he put the Israelites in as, as slaves and worked them really hard. And to stop them, stop them becoming more numerous, what did he do? He killed all the babies. Isn't that nasty? Isn't that bad? That's awful. You know, but what we know about the story of, uh, of the um, Israelites and Moses is that God doesn't forget, right? We might forget things, right? As you have seen the, in the people, did you forget? Do you, well, you haven't forgotten. You don't, just don't know. Uh, some of the adults might have forgotten some of these people, right? Uh, it doesn't really matter to them anymore because they're, they are people of the past. And the same way, the Egyptian king saw Joseph as something of the past and didn't care for the Israelites. And so he put them to, uh, to task. But God doesn't forget. And what, when God doesn't forget, what does he do? He promises to come and rescue them. And the same thing for you as well. When God knows you, will he ever forget you? If God knows your name, will he ever forget your name? No, he doesn't. He will always remember you. So when you are in trouble, what should you do? When you're in trouble, pray to God because he will never forget you. Right? He will always answer you because he knows you and will remember you. So let's pray to our God who always remembers and never forgets. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise that you're an amazing God, that you're a God of promises, and, and more importantly, you're a God who keeps your promises. Thank you so much that you have promised to, know, uh, to love us and care for us, and that you'll never forget us, that in your hands we are firm and secure and safe. So Lord, we pray that as, we, as the children grow up, that they may know and understand even more that you are the one who will look after them, that you are the one who cares for them, and that you will never forget them, and that you will always be there for them. Uh, so we pray that uh, this truth, this uh, uh, knowledge will be made uh, even more evident in their lives uh, and that they may truly tr uh, trust in you uh, all the days, days of their lives. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Get time for King, King's Kids. Damien. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy the kids' talks because it's right at my level. Yeah, it's good. Um, when our um, important part, we'll do um, congregational prayer and it's an awful lot to pray about, um, but we do know that God hears our prayers and especially as we come together as a congregation, um, our prayers are powerful. We don't see them, um, but God, we know that God hears them. Um, I've got lots of prayer points. You've got lots of prayer points in your bulletin. I've got a couple of extras here that um, people have asked me to pray for, and I'll, I'll do that. Does anyone have any prayer points? Eddie? Yep. 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 Um, any other prayer requests or any praise points? What lot to, I mean, lot to thank God for. Um, the rain, man, I think the rain's great, but God controls the weather, controls everything. So, do not fear, everybody. Do not fear. I mean, uh, people in the world, they must be really, really anxious, but um, God's got it all under control. Anyway, okay, let's pray. Uh, Father, we. We pray for our church family. Um, we thank you that we can be here today. 
We pray, Father, for those who can't be here uh, through sickness, through Ill, Ill health, um, through just being um, elderly. We pray that you will um, heal them and help them, Father, and comfort them and, and be with them and help us um, to encourage them as well. We pray for Janet and her mother, Janet um, and her mother Margaret, who've both been diagnosed with COVID, Father. Uh, we pray for Nick too, and that um, he won't contract it. We pray that they can have a, that they will have um, not not many um, severe symptoms, Father, and that they will make a full recovery, and um, that that will come that, that the healing will come speedily, Father. We pray for. Um, health and safety of Josephine and her baby, and we pray for Ben too, um, as, the, as the father, because um, I know, you know, you, you, as a father, you, you sort of, you really feel for your wife. We pray for, for Josephine's father, that, and we know, we um, pray for the doctors, we pray that you will intervene and that everything will take its natural course, and that if she doesn't, um, if the baby's not born by tomorrow, um, she will be induced. Um, <coughs> We pray. We do pray, Father. We know that you want, you have everything under control, and you need us together in our mother's wombs, Father. And that um, we just pray that everything will go really, really well, and they'll have a he happy, healthy baby, Father. We, um, Father, we pray uh, for Nadra um, that um, she's having um, health issues. Um, she's losing her appetite, Father, and um, it's been to the doctor and had doctors and had tests and. Um, I guess we'll be having further tests, but you know, um, you know what the issue is, Father, and we pray that you will heal that uh, through whatever means you choose, whether through medical practitioners or um, just or or just miraculously. And um, our bodies are miracles in themselves. We we pray that you will heal her, Father, and be with her and, and Ibrahim. Um, also, I pray for my wife and Father, who um, has health issues, has um, had health issues for a while with. Um, um, inflammation, Father, and um, she's having treatment for that. But we pray that uh, you will, again, you know what the what the real problem and the underlying condition is, and that you will um, resolve that. Uh, Father, we pray for Eddie and his family um, that they can find a new house uh, to live in, preferably in this area, Father, and I guess um, close to transport and shopping. And you know exactly what they need, Father, and. We know that you will work this out for them. We know that you will work this out, Father, for them. And we pray that um, you will do that speedily and, and it can be a really a good move and a, and a, better, um, a better place than where they are now. Father, we pray for the youth group, um, that, it will, that it will grow, um, be strengthened in Christ. Um, the youth are very important, Father. The next generation um, coming through and we pray that um, our youth will be believers, Father, and and that they, because one day they will have youth, Father, and we want um, we want the want it to carry on, Father. We pray for the Sunday school, and we thank you uh, for the kids' talk and the children who were here this morning, Father, and they will take these lessons um, throughout their life, Father, that they won't work or walk away, and that if any of them do, that they will remember remember and come back. Um, these are wonderful programs, Father. Please bless and guide the teachers um, and the facilitators of both youth group and um, Sunday school. Father, we also pray at this time, um, a lot of stuff going on in the world, Ukraine, Russia, China. Um, but again, um, we don't worry, we don't fear because you have it all under control. And um, if we just watch the news and listen to the news commentators, Father, we wouldn't hold out much hope. But um, they don't know what's going on, Father, but you do, because you know the beginning from the end, and it's all going to work out really, really well. Father, we pray um, for all of the um, babies in the womb. We pray, Father, for the, um, for, you know, what they call pro-life, Father, and we pray that um, sanity and, and um, righteousness will prevail. There's a lot of... Um, a lot of um, trouble going on now, a lot of protesting against the um, overturning of the Roe versus Wade ruling in the US. Um, but Father, no one's speaking up for the um, rights of the unborn children. We know that you love them, Father, and that's the real issue here, Father. Life is precious, every life is precious. And we pray that, um, that, these over that um, women can get the help that they need, Father, and that they don't need to um, 
kill their babies and that we will have compassion and that the church and people can hold out hope um, to these women, Father, that it's not a course that they um, would take or should take. And we know that um, you're in, you love those children, Father, and they are children. And we thank you, Father, that we have this opportunity to pray. We know that you'll hear our prayers. Um, we pray that you'll answer them and that we pray that we can just pray according to your will. We thank you now and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning's reading, if you'd like to follow on, is Acts chapter 17, verses 16 to 33. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and God-fearing Greeks as well as in the marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. A group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to dispute with him. Some of them asked, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating for foreign gods. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. Then they took him and brought him to a meeting of the Areopagus where they said to him, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears and we want to know what they mean. All the Athenians the foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. Now what you worship as something unknown, I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by, by hands and he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything, because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men, that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him, and find him, though he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As some of you, as some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone an image made by man's design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. 
When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. At that, Paul left the council. That's God's word. Good morning. Let's just come before the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we've heard your word read to us this morning. And we acknowledge it and we know that it's true. And this morning I uh, pray as I uh, preach from your word and... and, um, that what I I say, what I say is true too. And then it brings honour and glory to you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. Throughout the month of July, what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be looking at the important or some of the important features of God's character. The elders and Damien will be preaching on, and this is what we're going to be doing, looking at how God is just, God is holy, God is faithful, God is forgiving, and God is loving. And I'll start the series this morning with God is just. If you don't know me, I'm one of the elders, and my name's Bruce. You might remember this a couple of weeks ago. I definitely remember it because I was watching it on the TV. And you might remember it was where a teen who took the lives of a Brisbane couple and their unborn baby had been sentenced to six years behind bars after pleading guilty to manslaughter in court. What was that? The court heard that the then 17-year-old had been high drunk when he hit Matthew Field and Kate Ledbetter in a stolen car on Australia Day last year. The teen who can't be uh, identified for legal reasons had been travelling at 100 kilometres per hour in a suburban street when he hit a truck catapulting him into the couple as they were walking their dogs in Alexandra Hills up there in Queensland. Wow. Matthew's dad, Russell Field, fought back tears as he asked the, 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 um, the nine news reporter six years for the lives of three people. Where is the justice in that? Wow. Do you remember it? It was only a few weeks ago. Oh, it was amazing. And, and I, I knew that I was going to be teaching on, uh, preaching on justice and it it just hit me. Yeah, where is the justice in that? Six years. That's, we can walk free. In. Well, what is justice? Well, Tim Keller, the founder of the Redeemer Presbyterian Church in New York City, he states, Biblical justice is not first a list of bullet points or a set of rules and guidelines. It's rooted in the very character of God. And it is the outworking of that character, which is never less than just. God's justice. What does the Bible say about God's justice? Psalm 89, 14. It says, Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. God is just. It is part of his character, which means he is always just. He cannot be unjust. And he defines and sets the standard of justice. Find it in the Bible. So what is this word just? 
is it an adverb meaning exactly like oh, that's just what I need probably not is it very recently or you know just in the immediate past well I've, I've just seen the local paper <laughs> probably not no or is it the adjective based on or behaving according to what is morally right and fair or legally correct. I think that's the word of the meaning of just. This is the one. And justice, the word justice. Again, back to the dictionary. It is the quality of being just, <laughs> impartial or fair. The principle or ideal of just dealing right action. Conformity to this principle or ideal. Righteousness. So the word justice and righteousness in the Bible are just, yeah, you can almost say they're the same. You know, and then when you read Psalm 89, righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. You know, it's those two words. Well, when we read through the Bible, we find that that uh, God's justice involves sort of a number of areas. I'm not going to deal with all the areas today. That would take a series. <laughs> but we're going to look at um, two areas. Retribution and restoration as areas of justice. It's not only... Um, <coughs> um, so justice is not only punishing evil doing, but it restores those who are victims of injustice. Okay? Retribution is the legal word, refers to the act of setting a punishment for someone that fits the crime. When you stand before the judge. The, the Lord's justice is also retributive. It's also that. He not only establishes justice for those who have been wronged or mistreated, that's what we like to think, but he also meters out punishment to those who have perpetrated those wrongs. He does not spare the wicked. We find that many places through Ezekiel, like Ezekiel 7.4 or 7.9 or, 7, 9 or you know, 27. There's, there's stacks of places. As the judge of all the earth, the Lord will finally give everyone what justice dictates is, is due to them. And that's what we read today when we were looking at, um, when Greg read out in Acts 17, 30 to 31, just the last bit there of what he was reading, today's reading. I'll read it again slowly. As the judge of all the earth, the Lord will finally give everyone the justice what justice dictates is due to them that's God's justice but he also will restore and renew all things so there is no more evil suffering or death we find that in Matthew chapter 19 28 so both his retributive and restorative justice will come to final fulfilment at the end of history and we will live in a new heavens and a new earth filled with justice 2 Peter 3.13 so the God who created all things is a just God he's not just God he is a just God <laughs> he also has a mandate on how it should be run well, he's the creator. He gets to say what happens. And therefore, how we are to behave. I'm sure we're all referred to, we all know about the potter and the clay analogy. Who are we as the clay to tell the potter what to do? <laughs> but we do. <laughs> we behave in a way that is not uh, in line with God's ways, God's law. We lie, we steal, we cheat, we murder. Rather than show justice, 
we show injustice to all those around. And we know when we've been treated unjustly or see injustice, injustice happen to others, and unlike God, we also meter out injustice. Hmm. What's the word for it? We're rebels. And we deserve God's punishment. We deserve his justice. And that's the focus of today. That's the real focus that I'm looking at. How God's justice is um, what we deserve. Even just one sin, just one sin in your life is enough to reveal his justice. And you and I, one day, well, we'll die. And after that, and after that, face judgment. Where do we find that? Hebrews 9.27. I'm sure all those who did uh, the two ways to live will have that firmly in their minds as they re uh, remember that one. What will you say in your defence before the judge? So I'll read that again. You or I will one day die and after that face judgment. So you're before God, the judge, what will you to say in your defence? You've got to realise God is a holy, righteous judge. And this is where righteous, justice, hand in hand. Well, we know he hates sin. Jesus warned that God, in his wrath, will cast all who sin into eternal fire. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 13, 42. God's character of justice demands a punishment and that punishment is hell. It's mentioned over and over again. So what will you say in your defence before the judge, that just judge? What will you say? You're there? You might be tempted to say, well, I've tried to live your way, Lord. I've been a good person, mostly. Matthew 7, 22. This one always used to hit me until I really understood what it was about. It says, many will say to me on that day, this is the day of judgment, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles, then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Straight out of Matthew. You've got to ask yourself, who are these people relying on to get them into heaven? themselves it's not what it's not what you've done that makes you acceptable for, before God it's what you've done makes you unacceptable before God <laughs> you know these people we've done all these things we've done everything for you Lord what, what? <laughs> it's not what you've done it's like coming before a judge in court and say so you've got a thousand dollar speeding fine. Could even be more than that. You can't afford the fine. There's no way you can afford it. You've got no money at all. What do you do? Well, you say, oh, judge, oh, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Look, I usually don't speed. It was just the spur of the moment thing. You know, uh, um, I'm really a good driver. Really? <laughs> yeah, most of the time you don't speak. Now, if the judge looks down at you and says, oh, OK, I'm going to let you off. He said, OK, you're free. Off you go. Is the, just, is the judge showing justice? No. That would be an incompetent judge, or at the worst, a corrupt one. 
So the law is upheld, you receive a fine, and justice is shown by the judge. Okay? The cliche, do the crime, do the time, we've all heard that. But you could get off. You may have mercy shown if someone was to pay the fine for you as a gift. You can't afford it. You haven't got the money. Someone might say, I'll pay the fine for you. So the fine is paid. Justice would have been seen, seen to be done. The fine is paid and you would have received grace, an undeserved gift. And that's how it's with God. How God can show mercy to a sinner and also show his character of justice. If you let the sins go unpunished, the ones you've committed, then really he's not, he's not showing justice. Don't think you can get away with anything in this life. Or don't, you know, in this life, well, you, sorry, in this life, you might get away with a lot of things. You might. You might fill in a dodgy tax form. And then you get your money and you think, hey, you got away with that one, yeah. Hate someone so bad that you wish they were dead. I'm not going to go on. You know the list. <laughs> the hidden list goes on and on and on. There's more. Suppose we could put a device in your brain that will record all your private thoughts for a week and then play them on a big movie screen for all your friends and family to see. That would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? <laughs> God knows the secrets of your heart. Psalm 44, 21. Well, compared to some people, you're a saint. Right? But the standard we're looking at really is God's standard. And it's never anybody else's standard you should compare to. You'll have to answer for every sin on judgment day. Romans 14, 12 says, each of us will give an account of himself to God and face the judge of justice. It's all in the Bible. So, question is, how can anyone not face hell, be forgiven and get to heaven? That's the, that's the question really, isn't it? So how can, it, how, can, how can anyone, this can happen? So it's not about trying any better from now on. You know, God demands perfection. Put your hand up if you're perfect. Right, didn't see any hands. Okay. No one is perfect. We all sin and face punishment, judgment and death. Two ways to live taught us a lot a bit a bit last year. It says God's justice sounds hard, <laughs> but there is one way. How many ways? One. One way. If a sinless person offered to take your punishment, then justice would be served, and you could go free. And that person was the Son of God, Jesus. He always lived under God's rule, yet by dying in our place, he took our punishment and brought forgiveness. Wow. So, if he did that for you, how much punishment is left for you to take? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. He took 100% of your punishment. So if he did that for you, where would you go when you die, when you're there before God, heaven. A hundred percent assured. Not, well, 90%, you know, and, oh, because, you know, well, maybe, no, a hundred percent. He took a hundred percent of your punishment, therefore, a hundred percent you have assurance. 
So, based on this, why would you be going to heaven? Only, only because Jesus took my punishment. Romans 5, 8 says, God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And he offers it as a gift that you accept by trusting that Jesus took your punishment on your behalf. And that makes sense, doesn't it? So let's say today, let's say today, you trust that Jesus took your punishment and then tomorrow you sin again. And then two minutes later, you die. Where would you go? It'd still be heaven. Because Jesus took, you could say, Jesus took my punishment even for my future sins. Does that mean then that you should keep on sinning? Well, if he's taken all my sins, should I keep on sinning then? No, no, of course not. What put Jesus on the cross to start with? Your sins. Well, I used this analogy last time I was up here preaching. Imagine you get caught in a burning building. You're overcome with smoke, you're blinded and choking. No way out. Then a fireman comes in, grabs you by the scruff of the neck and drags you out. What would your reaction be? To start slandering the, the, the fireman? Or tell everyone how you escaped unaided? <laughs> no. You would thank him and then you'd tell everybody you meet. See that fire on the TV last night, the other night? Well, that fireman, he saved my life. You might praise him. And it should be like that with God. Knowing that he suffered and died for your sin, do you really want to continue to sin? No way. Not after realising what he has done for you, for me. In fact, out of gratitude... I would want to live the way that he wants me to. And Jesus also conquered death by raising him back to life, or by raising, he was raised back to life again on the third day. So to recap, how do you get this forgiveness? Well, the first thing is you can't earn it. Sorry, you can't. It's not by doing good deeds, going to church, praying, or even trying your best. It's a free gift. You must trust that Jesus' death on the cross is the only reason that your sins are forgiven. Not Jesus plus good works or Jesus plus the, sac the, sacrament, uh, the sacraments. If you now realise where you've been going wrong and, it's, and instead accept God's free gift of forgiveness and eternal life, you must trust that Jesus' death on the cross is the only reason that your sins are forgiven. Well, this will cause you, you know, even that, Realising that is a form of repentance because there's a different way of thinking now, isn't it? But you'll also not want to do the things that you used to do, not think the way you used to think, because turning from sin is the right thing to do. And if you're a Christian already, you know this, okay? You know that you've been adopted into his family as sons and daughters. You live with Jesus as your ruler. And as saved people, you delight in keeping his word and doing, his, uh, doing the will of the Father, such as sharing this message. Who? For his honour 
and his glory. Out in the foyer, there are a couple of tracks. I mentioned that last time I was up here. There are two tracks in the form in the foyer that, that go through exactly what I've been talking about. In fact, a lot of what I said here right now comes straight out of these tracks because it's true. I started off today telling you about injustice. Injustice that, that, that Russell Field felt as the man who killed his son, his son's partner and unborn grandson could be out of jail in six years. And many of us might feel the same, especially when it gets close to home. But God's character, revealed in the Bible, it reveals his justice. And being a God, and be, sorry, and being God, it is a perfect justice. And it deals with lawbreakers. It is the death penalty for our rebellion. That's justice. But he is also a merciful God. He shows mercy too. He's shown it, shown us, shown us his love in that Jesus Christ died my sins, your sins, all our sins. One for all. It says, Christ died for sins, one for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. 1 Peter 3.18. If you really want to understand what I've just been going through, the, the, you know, the two ways to live track is, is, is brilliant. It just puts it all in a, in a great format. Yep. Christ died for our sins once for all, one for all, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God, a sinless person to take our punishment. And he took our place, our punishment, and God's justice is served and we can go free offered to all who believe. It's offered, but if you're not going to believe it, that gift is not going to do you any good. To all who believe. How just is our God? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are a just God. Your justice prevails. And we know that we're rebels. And our punishment is due. It shows and reveals your justice. But you are also a merciful God. And you have provided a way for us not to get that punishment. You have given us a wonderful gift, your grace in Jesus Christ. His death on the cross. Where we see justice, mercy and grace all work. It's all part of your character, Lord. Thank you for doing just that. As we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I think it's great that Jesus has uh, saved us. And so I guess the question then is how do we live? Uh, we live for God. Uh, we ask God now to revive us to, in a world where it can be very easy to be complacent, uh, that we are to remember our just God uh, and to live uh, as the Bible tells us to live, and that is to serve Christ without all.
So let's now stand and let's sing to revive us. to you now trusting again in your power humble and heal us this hour in Jesus name help us repent of our ways our failures in seeking your face Open our hearts to your grace. This is our prayer. Revive us, O Lord. Send forth your spirit, unsheath your sword, and break through the chains by the power of your word. Revive us, revive us. Revive us, O Lord. Idols have captured our land. We worship the works of our hands. Lord, for too long we have built houses on sand. Teach us to number our days. Cause us to walk in your ways. Boldly proclaiming your praise until you come. Revive us, O Lord. Send forth your spirit and sheath your sword and break through the chains by the power of your word revive us revive us revive us O lord revive us O lord send forth your spirit unsheath your sword and break through the chains by the power of your word revive us revive us revive us O lord Thank you so much, Bruce, for uh, the sermon, reminding us again of the injustice we have in the world as you started off with the, the story or the, this legal case which the guy was given only six years. And that's what the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 5, verse 8. You can read that yourself later on. It says that if you see the oppression of the poor, and if you see that rights and justice are denied in the world, do not fret, do not be shocked, do not be surprised, because we're living in a fallen world. But again, Bruce remind us, reminded us that only God is perfectly just. He reminded us again that, obviously, if he was just, all of us, would have been going to hell. But because he forgave us, because the, the punishment is due, being paid by Jesus, the Bible tells us that justice and mercy met together on the cross of Jesus. What a great news. 
So let's thank God for that. Lord God, we thank you again for what we heard today and what we've been reminded of. We know in the heart of our hearts that we are imperfect beings. A nice word of saying that we are sinners. But Lord, through Jesus and what he's done on the cross, the punishment being paid by him on our behalf, and you have forgiven us. So Lord, we pray that we continue to cling to the good news of Jesus. Love him more. Be obedient to his word. Lord, we thank you once again for what we heard today. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. You are invited for a cuppa afterwards. And in the way out on your left-hand side, there is a box for offering. Uh, some of us would uh, usually transfer money to the church account. But if you want to pay money, uh, there is an offering box at the end. Let's finish off with the uh, Lord's, not the Lord's prayer, <laughs> the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Have a good week. Remember that tonight there is a prayer meeting in this church here. Come and thank God for what he's done for you. Have a good week.